Hi, my name is Jamie, and welcome to the One World Your Story Project. We share stories from people all over the world and from all different walks of life. Because here's the thing, no matter where you are on this wild planet, and no matter what journey you have already been on, we all have our own unique story, which brings our own unique perspectives to the table. And you never know who you might inspire or completely transform simply by getting real and sharing your story. And right now, while the whole world is dealing with COVID-19, there are 7 billion people all venturing through on their own unique path. So drop in with us to hear some of these stories. And on that note, sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode of The Corona Diaries. Um, today is Friday, May 15th. How are we already in the middle of May? I don't know, but we are. Um, Friday, May 15th, 2020. And I would love to know who I'm sitting here with. So just gonna ask you a couple of real basic questions to get started and then we'll really uh, dump in, okay? So what is your name? <laughs> My name is David Telfer McConaughey. Okay, awesome. So nice to meet you, David. And how old are you? I turned 34 years old on the 20th of March this year. Okay, like right when this was all going down. How interesting and happy yeah. late birthday. Thank uh, you. 20th of the, March. The State, de the State Department issued, issued their, um, you know, stay at home, uh, travelers abroad, come home immediately. Basically issued the shutdown order on like the 18th of March. Yeah, uh, right so, about. Yeah. Um, <laughs> perfect timing. Now, by the way, um, I'm a Pisces. I'm February 22nd. You are not. You're like right afterwards, right? The cusp of the other one. Yeah, well, so it, it, it really depends. Um, in the Western system, I'm, I'm the last degree of Pisces. Uh, my sun sign is, is, like, is right on the cusp. Okay. But technically, technically like 29 and a half degrees Pisces. Okay. So I, I identify, and, and in the Vedic system, it's like six degrees of Pisces. So like right early degrees of Pisces. And, and my ruling planet, Venus, is in Pisces. I, I have a lot of Pisces energy. I can share. actually feel that. I don't actually know that much about the, all the different signs. I do know about Pisces because I happen to be one. And what yeah. I feel from you in that regard is this like very compassionate, emotional, joyous, kind of dreamy vibe. Um, the dreamy, the, the poet, mystic, dreamy piece is like, blessing and a curse right oh it's my like, god yeah oh anything's possible which means i'm just gonna sort of nap all day and daydream yeah. <laughs> get out of my head david yeah, um, yeah right <laughs> <laughs> okay so march 22nd did you march 20th excuse me is your birthday yeah, um yeah. and you turned 34 got it um and where are you in the world uh i am on the isle of air raid which is off the southwest tip of the Isle of Mull, which is off the western, southwestern side of Scotland. Um, okay. Right, it's right next, right next door to the island of Iona. And this is, this island is about one square mile. Uh, it is owned by a Dutch family who visits for one month every year. And the other 11 months, they have developed a partnership with the Findhorn Foundation, which is a famous uh, intentional community eco-village project based on the north side of Scotland. It's been around for oh, 60, 70 years at this point. And um, so there's a community of about 13 people at, at this moment living here. Uh, there's, there's one row of houses along the front side of the island. And then the rest of the island is wild. I mean, there's sheep. There, there are sheep. There are deer. Um, there are dolphins. There are seals. There are cliffs and caves and beaches, like white sand beaches. There's a whole area of the island called the Caribbean, uh, which would be lovely if the seawater were more than you know 33 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, but we do go swimming on you know 
mostly on sunny days, but there was a day where it was like cold and raining and we went and jumped in the ocean. So that, that sort of thing is happening. So, so yeah, um, I, uh, was planning this trip. All of my genetic heritage is Scottish. And the last time I was here for a family reunion in 2016, I think, I felt this sort of genetic connection to the land. I'm like, oh my God, like, this is my place. This is, this is where I'm from. And I've never, I've been a lot of places in the world and I've never felt that like, oh, like, this is, this is like, to like the land and the, like, okay, wow, this is what, this is what this feels like. And, and so I, you know, had this feeling of wanting to go back, sort of without my family. It's very different to travel by oneself as opposed to like with the family. And and so I, last fall, um, you know, I inherited a bit of money from my mom's side of the family, which is this Scottish side. And so I was like, all right, you know what? The first thing, I, I did three things. I paid off my car, I got LASIK surgery, and I booked this month long trip to Scotland. And, and so I was planning to be here, basically, I left February 26th and was planning to fly back April 1st, which I should have known from the start was a foolish idea, right? And, and so I spent a couple weeks with the Fintorn Foundation in their two campuses on the north side of the island. I was in Inverness, and I spent uh, a couple days in the far northwest highlands like hiking and trekking you know, um, visiting waterfalls and uh, testing the limits of my like solo adventuring capacity and uh, wayfinding and all that and then for my birthday I had planned to come down to this island of air raid where they honor the uh, Celtic the 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 druid calendar so so you know the um spring equinox is is a is a holiday and so there's like you know celebrations i was like cool like for my birthday i'm gonna come to this this island and celebrate and within about three days of being here the u.s state department said either come home now or expect a shelter in place and don't expect any help um and i looked around at you know, okay, so if the whole world is shutting down, I'm on a remote island in a small community where most of the food comes from the garden, all the water is collected from the rain off the rooftops. Um, I spend my days chopping wood because um, everything is heated with uh, wood fire stoves. Like, yeah, I think, uh, I think I'm gonna stay here uh, as opposed to, you know, getting on a train to London to fly to Detroit to like, <clears throat> that sounds terrible. And um, so I just, I looked around, I was like, okay, I think, I think I'm here for a reason. And I'm just going to wait it out and, and sort of shelter in place on this, this island. And, and so that's, that's where I, this is where I've been ever since. I, I, I did spend a week on the island of Iona right next door, uh, which is an, an amazing, beautiful, epic, holy place. Um, and, and so, yeah, that's, that's where I am still. And oh. there's a bunch of, you know, yeah. As well. Oh my God. Like, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. First of all, I had no idea that you were not in Denver. I just assumed that because Amelia connected <laughs> us and because of the community I knew you were a part of, I just thought you were here. Yeah. Do you live in Denver yeah, normally? I'm I, I live in my permanent address is in Denver, yeah, okay. in, in Lakewood. Okay, like and when you and started, Sheridan sort of area. Okay, totally get it. And now, when you were describing where you first were, I literally thought that they were fake, made up places, and they were somehow <laughs> like wind back to Denver because they were somehow lined up with whatever other like made it. I have no idea the words you were saying. I'm like, cool, David. Yeah. Like, Air where are you going with this? And then and turned out real place that feels like your homeland. The only time I've ever experienced, actually I didn't really, I did later when I was there, but I, so I'm 100% Jewish, been to the homeland, right? Gone to Israel. Yeah. And they say when you land yeah. there, people have this experience on the tarmac, literally of like feeling like they have to get down on their knees and kiss the ground. And 
I didn't have that. When I went into the Negev desert, however, I did this energy. I was like, yeah. whoa. And I felt my ancestors. It was insane. Um, so yeah. I get that. Um, and it's well, a and crazy it's, feeling. It is a crazy feeling. And, and you know, it's interesting because in advance of this trip, when people, I was like, hey, I'm going to Scotland for a month. You're like, okay, what's that about? It, in that conversation, several people are like, oh, it's your birthright trip. Ah, <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I really, of course. I really, you know, that makes that makes a lot of sense to me. Absolutely, um, yeah. uh, and that's essentially what you described, kind of, in the whole experience yeah. and feeling. And now, and then, you got this inherent. Now you're back there. I mean, it's amazing. The universe. Like, and, and yeah, like using using the money from that side of the family to yeah, like go and and explore crazy. my own roots. And um, pretty cool. I lived a very like. I lived a very nomadic childhood. Um, I did not go to the same school two years in a row until fifth grade, uh, and and so yeah, and and you know visited visited Israel uh, as a I think I was seven. Uh, we'd been living in Tokyo, and on our way back to the states, stopped and visited some friends in in Jerusalem, and and you know toured around, um, and. And so to feel that feeling of like, oh, like this, this place, like that, that's not- sense of belonging uh, that, that yeah. is yeah. indescribable otherwise. And it just feels right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and there's, you know, I, I get confused about this sometimes, you know, my, my uh, social justice mind sort of rails against this feeling but so i lived in bogota colombia for um in Santa colombia wow um, um, colombia. wow um and i loved it there it was amazing and also exhausting like to be totally. a racial minority totally. is a is like i'm like having had that experience I, it gives me a whole different view on what it is to be a racial minority and like you know, being on a crowded bus, everybody talking loud, and then my cell phone rings, and everybody goes silent to listen to the gringo speak Spanish, like, <laughs> badly on his cell phone. And it's just like, fuck, like that, and, and everywhere I go, and like, you know, obviously I'm blonde hair, blue eyed, like, I'm obviously not from there. And so it's just like this whole other level of attention and energy about the place that, that ultimately tired me out and sent me home. Mm. Whereas here in Scotland, everybody assumes that I'm from here until they hear my accent. Uh, unless I start talking, people just assume that I, you know, I, I, totally. look, I look like I'm from here. And, totally. and so again, that's where my social justice mind is like, so like, what, what's that about? And like, shouldn't, isn't, shouldn't we like seek diversity? But there's, there is value, like the feel at home and like oh, the a climate works we're social, for me we're pack animals nothing. i think we forget totally. that sometimes and i trust me i yeah. have that that mind too i'm a very global citizen i feel like yeah. um and my yeah. mission is to bring people together but at the end of the day we can't forget that we're tribal yeah it doesn't well, mean that we all can't get along but it that, there is this sense of belonging that you can't really get otherwise totally and there's all this research from like public education and all the studies show that white kids learn better from a white teacher, black kids learn better from a black teacher, Latino kids learn better from a Latino teacher. And it's just like, because there's a shared experience. Well, it, shared... Literally, it, it, it is about connection. What connection does yeah. when you have a commonality, it creates unity. It creates oneness yeah. so you can see and hear and get things automatically in a different way because there's a level of comfort that is uh, yeah. that it just you have to work at in other ways not to say that it's not possible yeah. but it's more automatic it's more automatic right which is not to say it's not worth the effort to work exactly. at it because some of the that's that's where like some of the most rich like Absolutely. evolutionary but that takes educational effort. experiences happen that takes conscious effort exactly. which to maintain 24 hours a day is exhausting. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so see what I'm saying where there's so much juicy stuff. Yeah, we, yeah. We, we, may, we may have to schedule a second session. We haven't even begun yet. We might have to, this is amazing. I mean, there's so, I'm like fucking fascinated to hear your story because as I said to you, you know, I was in Hawaii on an island 
and actually had this thought like, oh, like if supply chain gets fucked. But however, you mentioned that you have this kind of self-sustaining environment that you're on. So those thoughts don't necessarily, but before you get into any of that, there's one last, yeah. two last little things. I just need to get basic knowledge. So you're on this island. Are you in an apartment? Are you in a community space? Where are you actually living? Um, so there's uh, the only buildings on the island. I mean, there are like piles of stone from the Iron Age on the backside of the island. But the only real like modern buildings is this one row of stone houses. And so there are there are nine houses. And so uh, nine numbers nine and eight are the dining room and the kitchen and the community space. And then one through seven are sort of like shared apartments. And so each each unit has like a living room and a kitchen and two like two or three bedrooms. Like there's there's a main, there's like a master bedroom that's one on its own, and then another room that sort of has has two different bedrooms. Um oh so, my God. so the community lives sort of in this like, you know, there there are like so like I'm in I'm in house number one. I have one roommate, this, um, you know, she's a 40, 50 something Dutch woman. She's lovely. And we just share, we share the space, we clean, we do dishes. Um, but then there's also this sort of commu greater communal vibe. And um, Wow. Yeah. Okay. I, I know, I think you said this, but can you remind me how many people actually live on this island? 13. And actually, as of tomorrow, that is being reduced to 11 because there's this uh, Swiss couple who have been um, traveling for a year who are ready and feeling able to make it back to Switzerland. Now, this, is, this has been the last leg of their journey, and they've been delayed by several months, and, and so they're leaving tomorrow. And so for the first time since this COVID lockdown happened our community is changing uh, so we've we've got we've got this this couple that's leaving which is, and with is sad people, so there's actually two people that's a big that's a big change it really is it's gonna totally change the dynamic okay yeah oh my god there's so much to dig into one last thing i gotta get a scope of david what do you do ah uh, yeah um <laughs> like so, I don't think that this is going to be an easy answer, but let's hear it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> on the island of Air Raid, I am mostly responsible for uh, splitting wood and chopping kindling, and and I take great pride in and and great pleasure in in chopping the kindling as fine and precise as possible and um it's it's beautiful so in my professional work i am trained as an ayurvedic doctor and a vedic astrologer and i am an ordained minister with a master's degree in metaphysics and a bachelor's degree in uh, english and creative writing and and so basically the modality uh, my practice is called multi-dimensional medicine and and so basically i do one-on-one -on -one consultations with people and where they are at determines where we go and so we can talk about everything from diet exercise lifestyle um, herbalism uh, all sort of Ayurvedic health and wellness practices, panchakarma, that whole realm of things. Um, a lot of people, most people these days are coming to me for the Vedic astrology because they're in this, especially in this moment, there's this like, what the fuck is going on quality to what everybody is feeling. And, and so the stars give us some pretty at least create a narrative there's a, like context makes a big difference like narrative medicine is really powerful where if things are going terribly and there's no context for it that's terrifying and debilitating but if things are going terribly but we understand it in the arc of a story then there's meaning in the suffering and we can suffer better and and with some sense of um 
the realistic hope. So, uh, and then, and then really everything I do is sort of under the umbrella of um, spiritual counseling and, and, you know, the, the ministerial part. Um, so I'm, I'm a minister in the wisdom of the heart church and a co-founder of a self-supported spiritual organization called the Sanctuary of the Inner Compass, which is associated with the Everland Project there in Colorado. And, and so um, that, that's really the base, the umbrella under which I organize my offerings, because that, that's, like, that's my understanding of why I'm here on the planet, is to, like, I have, sort of obsessively sought out this, like I have needed answers to how things work, why it works, why is there so like, what, what the fuck is going on? And um, how does it work and why? And, and how does spirit densify into matter? And what are the mechanisms for that? And how do we understand it? And how do we use that understanding to change our daily habits in a way that helps us be more in flow with cosmic cycles, all that stuff, right? So, so that's been my personal journey and sort of obsessive pursuit. And, and so it's that relationship to that knowledge that I, that is sort of primary in my life that I then want to turn around and offer to others, like insofar as it's helpful, like, you know, if, if yeah. So, I'm so like the way that shows up really is, is that I never turn anyone away for financial concerns. Basically, like, I haven't quite figured out how to set up my business, like, in a technical, legal, financial way this way. But basically, I, I consider, um, I, I accept donations, right? And there's a recommended donation for a consultation with me. But basically, it's just like, this is what I'm here to do. And so I make myself available to do it. And this is the, what I need in return to be able to eat and sleep indoors every day and um and so yeah that's that's basically that's i think that's it i'm like is this weird to say i'm just gonna say i'm like i i love you i'm in love with you like i just want to know like <laughs> all of this stuff holy shit wow cool 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 and and what i like this is so off the record slash on, whatever we're on the record but I was yeah, we're publishing to, this unedited, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. Um, I was talking to an aunt of mine a couple weeks, about two weeks ago. Like, oh, I have this business idea, right? I feel like I finally get my purpose. I'm like, okay, I have this one road that I can go down where, like, I think that's where the money is. But is that really what I want? And what you're describing. And I know, like, this is my gift. And it does feel weird sometimes to charge for it, but you do have to survive. We live in a world where, unfortunately, we need money to survive. But it, it would be cool if it was just trade and barter because what you're describing, I mean, come on, you live very sustainably like that. But what I appreciate about what you said is donate. Here's what I need to live. If you could help me get there, great. I'm going to help you with whatever you need. And you're chasing your bliss because that is the joy if that's what you're meant to be here to do. And by the way, the money will follow, abundance will follow. And it seems like, You've been able to do just fine doing that, which but you're just giving me a lot of inspiration. It's a separate, separate note. So, okay, wow, you do so many cool, beautiful things. And I love what you said about the kindling because I remember hearing somebody say something one time, it's not what you do, it's how you do it. And can you take pride and find joy in every little thing? And you've found that in chopping wood. And that's fucking Oh cool. my God. Chopping wood is is I don't want to live anywhere where I don't get to chop wood anymore because it's so therapeutic. Mm. Um, you know, we talked about Iron John as we were getting started. And, and so there's this whole section where uh, Robert Bly is discussing the difference between copper and iron and, and both like literally the metals, but also like it, it's all metaphorical, of course. And copper is an excellent conductor of energy and electricity right so so if energy is over here and you've got some and you want to move it over here copper will get it there pretty efficiently mm -hmm. whereas iron has its own magnetic field and it's just so and weird because even the name iron you just think of it as being like stuck firm in place right. the core 
the molten core of the earth is yeah, iron, yeah. right? And, and it's just, it's got its own magnetic field. Things come into that field and adjust to it. Uh -huh. And so, so he, he, there's this whole period, there's this whole section of the book where he's discussing the difference between a copper man and an iron man. And, and like the, how in the, especially like the, um, I think, I think it's a derogatory term, although who knows, uh, the, the concept of a snag, the, the sensitive new age guy, coppery, all super coppery and like beautiful and sensitive and, uh -huh. and they can feel what other people are feeling, but, but then everything they're running through their nervous system is other people's energy. And they're so sensitive to the world around them that they don't have their own center of gravity. They don't have their own magnetic field. And, and like, I should be using I statements here, right? Cause I'm so familiar with what it means to be copper. And, and so anyway, I'm, I've got the audio book going and I'm like swigging the ax. I'm like, yeah, iron. I think, I, I think I'm getting it. Yeah. Not copper anymore. Iron. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think I, it make, it's making sense. Uh, let me, let me try again. Yep. Uh, it's working. And yeah. So yeah, it's so therapeutic. And, and I mean, the, the thing that I haven't mentioned, uh, is, you know, so along with, so, <laughs> um, the week of my birthday, I, I landed on this Island. Uh, the shutdown order came. I decided I was going to stay. I told my parents, they freaked out. They, you know, immediately went into feel like, profound fear like david you need to come home immediately you don't be stuck on you just like like furious fear right and felt that run through my whole nervous system and and nonetheless like okay no but i know what is correct i'm gonna say here and then uh on my birthday my romantic relationship uh officially dissolved uh it, it had sort of been on the rocks and like what's really happening here is like well i've got this trip to scotland so we're going to take some space but it was it was then like on my birthday i was like okay like we're not actually in a relationship anymore are we um so that's you know 18 months almost two years of, of connection dissolving and and so so again it's been this really profound like um breaking away from everything familiar everything known like um sort of defying my parents full on like all reference points all ground um well out. yes and no it's like you lost all the grounding that you knew yet found the most grounding that you didn't know that you ever wanted or needed like whoa that's yeah. pretty cool well and and it, it it is you know in this realm of iron and copper right so all For the sure. copper all the copper wires got totally frazzled and frayed and too much electricity running through those copper wires. But, but from that grounded place of, of iron, it's like, Ooh, like I'm actually fine. I, I'm at, it's, I'm better than ever. Actually. Like, uh, uh, one of my mentors was asking me to describe like a peak experience of my life, like a time or a moment when I was just like, and everything was just like, yeah, feeling right. And good. And I was like, you know, like, right now comes to mind um and like described all you know i'm eating food seasonal food from the garden i poop in a compost toilet i'm chopping wood i'm you know my practice is busier than ever i'm giving all these talks and like all like all the things and like the subtext of that is like my heart is a little bit broken or at least confused and you know, I haven't seen my parents for months and like, but, but all that is, that's all the copper stuff. That's just sort of like, still like sparking off. Whereas the iron beef is like, yeah, this is great. This is, this is the life that I want to live. Uh, I feel like you're redefining yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, in a huge cool. Way. It's it's really huge. cool. And to bring it back to the coronavirus, I honestly feel like it is that moment for the fucking planet right now. Are we going to take it or not? And I feel like some people are, and some people are really resisting it. I mean, there is massive change that was just dumped on everybody's lap. Everyone. Yeah. No matter what, like there's different degrees and levels to it. But I think that if we choose to actually dump in and go with it and take the gift that has been put in our lap, 
it's hard to see it sometimes, but if you go with it, it could be beautiful for everybody, everybody. Yeah. Um, so yeah. let's, let's go back in time real quick, if you don't mind. Yeah. When was the first time that you remember hearing about coronavirus? Mm. And I just want you to know, I'm listening to you. I'm just opening my door here so I get some light coming in, okay? Okay, yeah, 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 totally. That, um, I don't have a specific answer to that question. I remember there being whispers of it. You know, I sort of heard about what was happening in China. Like, I, I tend to just keep up with, you know, I'm paying attention to the news generally and hearing about what's happening in China and it's okay spreading a little bit, but you know, that's like November, December. And, and there have been multiple iterations of this swine flu and bird flu and all these things, right. That, <clears throat> you know, made it to Mexico or were, you know, like, and, and were sort of toted as the, this, terrifying pandemic that's going to ruin the world and it's been nothing happened right i remember um i guess it was 2010 i think it was something was happening in mexico and i was specifically on my way to guadalajara to i was, I was in guadalajara for six weeks studying to teach english did you and, eat um torta ahogado oh every day every <laughs> day it, suck it out so of the bag much, <laughs> So much, and it's just uh, not the best. My my stomach, uh, as as your Ayurvedic doctor, cannot positively recommend uh, that substance. But uh, amazing, but it tastes so Delicious. good. <laughs> it tastes so good. <laughs> but it doesn't necessarily feel so good. That's for sure. No, it doesn't feel right. And this is this is this uh, deeper level of discernment uh, <clears throat> of <clears throat> excuse me, what is actually pleasurable. Right, right, right. Right. <clears throat> um, but yeah, and and again, I, I got in a big fight with my dad where he wanted me to get a flu shot before I went. I'm like, no, like my immune system is super strong. I take good care of myself. Like I'm not, I don't know. I'm not going to, I don't trust, I don't and want What that. is the flu shot going to do for coronavirus right now, by the way? Right. Right. Well, and like, I trust my immune system more than this hastily, 100%. you know, prepared concoction of what? Me like, too. Same. You know, and what am I going to put that in my body? So it potentially weakens slightly just to get stronger, right. maybe? Like, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Not, so, not into it. Not so, into it. yeah. You had heard about it on the news, but kind of was thinking, it's probably not going to be as big because we've had this before. I've been here. Okay. You have this trip planned yeah. for February 26th. You're leaving the U S. Yeah. And I remember at the end of February, right at the end of February, actually that weekend that you're talking about, Oh, 26 was not the weekend. It was the 29th and 28th. It was, it was a Wednesday. And yeah. I believe February 26th was the day that the, first case was reported in the United States. The U.S., because at that time it was already serious in Italy. That's what people were talking yeah. about. And they were starting to talk about yeah. Spain. And I remember this because that was like right around my birthday weekend. And we flew from the island of Maui to Kauai. Yeah. And you're thinking about yeah. going through that international airport of Honolulu. We were like, Ugh. but also it was like, we're okay. But it was a little freaky because that's an international hub for like Asian countries coming to the U.S. Right. Go yeah. through that yeah. Hawaiian airport. Um, so yeah, I mean, you decided to still go. And by the way, you do all this like Ayurvedic astrology readings. I mean, I'm assuming here, so correct me if I'm wrong, but had you already done some looking at the stars to figure out what was going on, did you kind of already know what you were getting into when you went, if you were being truly honest? Uh, yes and no. Um, like what made you, know, you actually I, say, I'm going to leave the U S screw it. Um, so that, that was way more of an intuitive move. Okay. And, and it, it had something to do with the sort of what was happening in my relationship. Whereas okay. like, you know, something was off and it was like, all right, I need to, do something different. And I was, I was honestly considering like moving 
or like I, I needed to, to do something. Okay, so, so there was something brewing inside of you where you knew you needed something, a shift. Yeah, needed to shift something, and and I had considered. Yeah, I'd looked. You know, I sketched out a whole itinerary where it was six months in Scotland, six months in India. And there was a whole series of like workshops and trainings. I was like, cool, like I've never been to India as a, an Ayurveda person. Like there's a bunch of stuff I can go and learn there. Yeah. And like, cool, like that sounds great. But but a year away, that felt drastic. That felt like, okay, I'm, I don't need to escape this situation. I need to step away from it to get perspective looking back on it and so like okay a month is is long enough to go and like you know really get to know a new place without like disappearing right i'm not i'm not abandoning i'm not escaping I'm like okay like let's let's take the sort of middle path and and i'll i'll go sure. and and i'll come back with with new clarity and uh i have been laughing at that thought process uh, <laughs> as as i approach you know i finished three months here and like no end in sight so um yeah i i definitely you know when choosing what days to fly i i definitely consult the you know what phase of the moon is it and what what days are these things happening and <clears throat> I I got in there like Mercury was turning retrograde right on that February twenty sixth day. Yeah, and yeah, that's true. So <clears throat> so you know there were some pretty and it was a leap year. Yep, yeah, yeah. So so there's pretty careful calculations there, and um, you know looking back. I realized that I wasn't paying as close attention to my intuition as uh, I, I mean, I wasn't not that I wasn't paying attention, but I didn't give it credit because there I, looking back, I remember these images of like, man, like. So, OK, let's start over. I have a teacher who recently published an essay. In which he wrote the sentence. I live as if the end of civilization is near. And and that really resonates with me because I feel like for the past uh, 20 years, since I, since I have had autonomous choice over where I live, I've had this in mind, like, okay, if and when the grid goes down, where am I going to be? Where, where am I going to get my food from? Who am I going to be with? And, and like that has guided a, significant portion of my decisions about where I want to be like living in Colorado like not going to be affected by oceans rising like you know like this, these sorts of um, considerations are a consistent part of my decision making process and 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 also like in this essay um, this teacher who's associated with the Animus Valley Institute was really alluding to like uh, as I understand it okay civilization as like uh, Columbus came and civilized the Native Americans, and um, you know, imperial capitalism is civilizing the third world, right? So, if civilization is coming to an end, like, whew, thank goodness, yeah. right? <laughs> so that's that's one that's that's the way I, I'm thinking about. It. But but there is this sense of like knowing how fragile our systems are, and and how in the illusion of like cool like everything's solid and the internet works and our our you know systems deliver food to the grocery store like that shit is fragile topsoil is delicate right like knowing all that um i that all of that is always in my mind when i'm making decisions about what i'm going to do and, and and looking at the astrology all that right so so at the time I was booking this trip, there were multiple times, which I just, I sort of discounted as like, oh, like that's fantasy. Or that's, you know, that's your Piscean, dreamy, poetic, mystical self, just imagining things. Uh, whereas like, okay, like, yeah, if, if the shit goes down, like Scotland seems like a good place to be. I feel like that's, you know, there's lots of farmland, there's lots of water, there, there's like 
there, I, I've got family there. Like that seems like it, that's an okay place to go. Um, so yeah, that, and here I am. In a place where you have solar panels and a garden and fresh water and all the shit where you really can take, the systems actually don't matter. In your community. Yeah, pretty close. I mean, we did, we did just, you know, yesterday, uh, every three months we, you know, there's a company called Green City and they, you know, they delivered us 3,000 pounds worth of flour and, you know, packaged food goods. Um, so we were not completely off the, off the grid. Um, you know, we, about 80% of the veggies we eat come from the garden. About 50% of the fruit we eat comes from the garden. And then, you know, we're uh, importing grain and seed and, sure, and, but if you, and that sort of thing. But if you had to make it work, you could. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that and, and, you know, there's there there are enough sheep and lambs like come come emergency time. Oh, my God. Um, what you described. I've, I've learned that I can outrun a lamb. So. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, I mean, what you described it with the dolphins and all the air, I mean, it literally sounds like a dream. I'm like, ah. It, it, yeah. It's pretty dreamy. And, and like, uh, Are you going to be able to come back to Denver, like, after living? I don't know. Well, no. Actually, no. I, I'm actually not making plans to come back to Denver, is the reality of the situation. And how does that um, uh, a mix with mix of things. There's there's a lot of grief involved with that, mm. um, and and in some ways, like you know, as much the, it's also tied up with my romantic relationship and the sense that you know, because even as the shit was going down, it's like if we were in a better place, I might have rushed to London to get on a flight back, right? But because that whole thing was falling apart, it's like, go back, like, to what? Like, to, like, be quarantined in my, like, um, you know, like, first ring suburban home with my four roommates. Like, I love my roommates. They're some of my best friends. And, like, I'm so glad that I have not been there for several months. Yeah. And instead, like, there's wilderness immediately out my back door here. And, and so, no, like, ultimately, like, from this vantage point, the United States looks terrifying. I, you know, my, when my parents are telling me, you know, just even this last week on Mother's Day, my mom was like, oh, I miss you, like, please come home. And she was, you know, she had me, like, in, you know, she was, like, making banana pancakes and, like, talking to my dad and the whole thing. And, like, oh, we wish you were home. I was like, yeah, I love you guys, too. And, like, but why would I come home? Like what, like what would that, so, so, so like we could all be stuck in the house together. Like, I don't, that, that doesn't sound like, um, the thing. And, and I'm very conscious of the privilege and like the blessing of being on this Island because the Scottish government considers us a family sheltering in place together. So we've all been here for months. None of us are sick. and and nobody is coming or going. So like uh, we abide by all, like there's a very specific sort of flow and rhythm to the day and the week within the Fintorn Foundation uh, tradition where uh, we have morning meetings and we tune in. And so we all, you know, we're sitting in a circle and we hold hands. And um, at the end of the meeting, there's a candle in the middle of the room that, and we send the light to, you know, whoever comes up. And so- Can I just tell Literally, we're all sitting in a circle and all like blow it, blowing out the candle, like literally blowing towards each other. Right. And, and it's fine. And we hold, we hold hands before the meal. Um, you know, I, I get hugs on a regular basis. And so in, in the very, like, yeah, don't leave that, it's, you know, it, it, as like, right. And as, as isolating as it is, you know, 13 of us here, like, but that's not because, isolating. Like, the more I learn about what's happening out there, like we are in a little bubble and I mean, I thought Boulder was a bubble, but, um, 
this is it's really special it, it's a, a more i understand about what's happening out there and what how it continues to go on and, and all of my friends both in minneapolis and in denver have been basically saying the same thing like don't come back you know the the only way anybody is hanging out is via zoom calls anyway so don't worry about it. you're not missing anything don't don't come back uh, so so at this point um i'm here for the foreseeable future it looks likely that i have to leave sometime at the end of june or july at which point i'm probably headed to a place called tamara which is in portugal it's another like spiritual community uh focused on architecture and uh the healing of love and relationships and um they got a whole whole system of knowledge and ways of knowing there as well so no i, I don't plan to come back to the united states at this point which is um again like just that deeper level like, okay like left home left my relationship left the country of my birth and so uh, and it sort of feels like the whole world is is like that and realize that even if i do come back to denver it's not the same place anymore like it's it's there there is the place i left no longer exists and so even if i tried to come back there's nowhere to come back to and and the like i feel like in my personal navigation there's you know this clear macro micro thing where there's the temptation in society as a whole to want to go back to what was comfortable like sure you know what was normal wasn't really working for the most part but god it was more comfortable than this and so let's go back to that let's go back out and you know drink on patios again or whatever it is right whereas and and so like there is i feel that temptation within me it's like you know what like i'll just go i'll just i don't know what to do so i'll go back to denver and i'll try to work it out or whatever and i go back to what i was doing um because that's more comfortable but actually but that's actually not more comfortable it's familiar but it's not comfortable and and so this we need to get over that transformational hump where um the what do they say the pain of staying where we are is greater than the fear of going into the unknown just like the relationships that's, you're just in yeah yeah exactly so so i'm really trying to and like like in feeling in my body the responsibility of being here and being the like one of the very privileged few people on the planet in a situation like this yeah. and and trusting that whatever i'm doing on this micro level does reverberate and so thereby cultivating the courage to like you know what be more iron and hold the course trust the path trust that i'm here for a purpose and and be courageous in in moving forward and uh, whatever that looks like um whether it's comfortable or not is is um has to be th there is no going back so so that's really the only option and it just depends to what extent we embrace that opportunity versus squandering it because that's my greatest fear at this point is we have this incredible opportunity the only time society gets shut down and brought to a complete halt like this is during war time right is like that's the only time this has ever happened in the past is is during a war and there's no war i mean there are wars happening I, I, but but there's not like a global you know it's not like not world, world war three right now like right right exactly i mean the u.s is still murdering uh brown people having weddings with you know <sighs> robots from the sky but that's you know that's part of it and and so th it is this incredible opportunity to take stock and really look at what we've been doing how we've been being and decide what of that we want to bring with us what of that we want to leave behind and act accordingly with courage it takes fucking courage to to make those shifts and and so my greatest fear is that we will not rise to that occasion and in my personal experience of evolutionary opportunities is is the world or nature or god whatever you want to call it sort of nudges you like hey hey 
hey, you want you want to wake up? Hey, it's, it's time to get up. It's time to hey, hey, and then it, like slaps you across the face a couple times, and then it's like rocking you, and then it punches you, and then it gets the two by four, right? and it's just ever like escalating, and you can ignore it for a while, but eventually like you're gonna wake up, and how many bruises you have is is relative, and and so my fear and and what we talked about with the astrology last week is that now is our opportunity this this is the gentle nudge like you know there there's been this sort of like little hey this little whisper like hey hey and it's been growing louder this is more like the like hey and and if we don't listen now there's there's a two by four in our near future and and that's that's just real like that's not fear mongering that's just where it's at and and so um that that is honestly i'm not afraid of the two by four i'm i'm afraid that we're asking for it right mm -hmm. uh, I, I think I, I think we um are my and i've i've, I've written this about myself many many times my greatest fear is squandered opportunity the idea that there was this chance to do something great and we missed it and now it's gone and it'll never happen and and that's like there's like a cosmic terror to that on this scale of like the species has a chance to evolve into this planetary organism like this is a paradise planet if we let it if we become the nervous system of it and and you know we have the technology we have the know-how in terms you know whether it's permaculture or these regenerative ways of being and we're just not doing it we're just not doing it because of money systems and power agreements that are stuck in place and defended with ak-47s and killer sky robots uh and and so that's uh, yeah what are we talking about <laughs> we were talking about um Jesus Christ, I don't even remember what we would yeah. question. I can't go back Can to you it. repeat the question? Um, it was something about. We're out of time. Shit. I don't know. I was like lost in what you were saying. And. Yeah, it's okay. Me too. I think that, I don't know, like you said, squandered opportunity. Is it really? Like, I think that too. But then I also know that it all happens exactly as it's supposed to. So right. is it squandered opportunity or do we just need to learn a bigger lesson? I don't know. And that's scary because yeah. sometimes the lessons that we have to learn are really fucking hard and challenging. I don't know. And there is this collective knowledge that we need to know. So I think there's individuals and we can be the change. You're, you're doing it. I'm doing it in the ways that I know how. There is a smaller yeah. collective within the collective, but like, ugh, I don't know. It's overwhelming. Yeah, it's overwhelming. And and I will just name that like uh that's definitely my fear body speaking about the um the squandered opportunity because my actual lived experience and like being here is another profound example. Like I chastise myself viciously for all the mistakes I've made in my life, and yet grace continues to pour over me and you know and uh, so so that is always there and it is it is always you know in divine timing and um you know when we take one step towards the divine it takes 10 steps towards us right and so so there is this like okay like it's you know we have so much uh unseen support yeah eager, yeah, to, yeah. eager to aid us if we would just stop, slow down, totally. listen to it, pay attention, and actually do the thing, right? Because totally. we're the ones who have to do it. Totally. We can receive all the encouragement and inspiration, and that's great. If you but listen, we actually it happen, to... and go for it. Yeah. For me, it's yeah, not like totally. what the opportunity that what that I miss. It's like, am I taking it and creating what could be? That's more mm -hmm. like, because like you said, the second you get in flow, then the magic starts unfolding. But if you're not there, as it ha I don't know. And then time is precious, right? Um, yeah. So, okay. We have to go because I'm interviewing Amelia in four minutes. Um, oh, but, right. okay, oh, great. No, lovely. 
Ugh, there are so many, I mean, we barely even dug in. I'm just, how can we end this? Okay, I'm gonna end it on two, <laughs> on two questions. Okay. Um, the first one is something that I ask everyone and I would love to hear your perspective on this, which is, you know, I bet you know this as, as probably deeper than I do. The unfortunate truth is that in darkness is when light shines the most. You know, it's like in these tragic moments when we have our backs up against the walls, when the human spirit shines. It's really beautiful, but like alternatively sad that it has to take that. But that's the position that we're in right now. And because of that, so many beautiful things are already coming out of this. Um, and so I'd love to know from your perspective, what are you already seeing good from your friends, family, local communities, Scotland, the UK? the US, the planet, the world, what are you already seeing good? And what do you think good is gonna come out of this? And the, quest, the second question yeah. I ask you is like, from your lens of like, I don't know, Ayurveda or whatever you study, is there a message that you wanna say on the record for everyone? And I feel like they kind of go hand in hand, maybe, mm -hmm. but take it for what you will. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so the first piece, the appropriate lesson and impulse of this moment is this focus on essentials and whether that's essential errands essential workers right like there is this this breaking down of all the superfluous bullshit that we distract ourselves with in neoliberal capitalist society that is a complete waste of resources time energy you know all that right and so in this moment it, there's this really powerful focalization of what actually matters when mm -hmm. the shit goes down who am i zooming with first and and of all the like because there's no like just casual seeing people at a party right if you want to connect with someone you have to specifically reach out to connect with that person mm -hmm. and so who are those people who, who, is, who are those people? And so now you really, there's this crystallization of who's your tribe? Who is showing up for you? Who, for whom are you showing up? And, and so I think that's a really powerful reality check. It's been super like, strange for a lot of people. Strange yeah. meaning like the people that you would think that that is, isn't necessarily it. And there's these people that haven't been there that are all of a sudden really showing up. It's very interesting because it's a completely yep. different kind of relationship to your point. Yeah. Almost a more yeah. and, truthful and honest relationship in a way. Yeah. I, I mean, I, can, I can't, I don't have time to talk to anyone who can't handle the full reality of what I'm bringing. Mm -hmm. Basically, like, I, I don't really, there's no one where it's like, cool, like, let's sit and just, like, pretend to be nice to each other for a little while. Like, I don't, there's no, there's no time for that. Yeah. Um, and, and so it's just, like, really, like, essential piece. And, and so my hope is that um, people take that to heart and, um, and that as a society, we take that to heart because most of our essential workers are illegal immigrants making less than min minimum wage. Right, like that's that aren't our getting healthcare, by the way. System that aren't that don't get any healthcare that aren't eligible for um, you know the Orange King stimulus check or whatever, right? Like oh, that's God. not. It's so fucked. And so, like, who are the essential people in our society, and why are why are they treated the way that they are? And that has to be a major wake up call. For, for everyone, right? these people that we just don't pay attention to, where all of a sudden they are like given the official label of essential. And it's like, oh, and you you don't think they deserve more than seven twenty five an hour? Like, so- Yet so somebody that, sitting that there on their couch singing the, a song like, can get paid $20 million. Totally, totally. Which, you know, song, art and song is just as important now as ever. It's essential. But it, Don't but get it, me wrong. It's an equity thing, right? Yes, yeah. yes, right. absolutely. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, so I think, you know, you know, this talk I gave was apocalyptic astrology, right? 
and and so the apocalypse is the great revealing and so it's it's very much revealing all these cracks in the system that that were already there uh, that that we can't help we can't deny anymore there's there's, there's no room for we can't pretend we don't actually is really beautiful uh, yeah it's really beautiful and if if we then take the initiative to to shift it amen and and i, I know you got to go talk to amelia um a message um um the the key thing you know studying the cycle of history is that anytime there's a tumultuous turnover revolutionary atmosphere the you know the elites get toppled and a new group ascends to the top but basically the pyramid just flips over right and there's just a the structure remains the same and there's just different people at the top and they become tyrannical and and flip into that same archetype and and so if there, nothing short of a revolution is required at this moment in the way we organize ourselves as a species on the planet and that revolution fails externally if it doesn't occur thoroughly internally first mm -hmm. Because if if you if you topple the elites, great, and you get to the top, and you haven't shifted the the mode of awareness internally, then you're gonna, then we are going to do the same thing over again. And and so the the first work is to be with the emotions that arise, be present with yourself, take care of yourself, find the tyrant within you, find the you know all find the the racist within you find, and like and be with those parts and and tend to them and be gentle and sweet with them and integrate them so that then when we're dealing with it in the outer world it's less threatening and it's it's it can be integrated in that realm as well and and so it, and that's not to sit around a navel gaze right like the boat the the work has to you know because then it's the external stimulus that shows us like oh shit i'm racist as fuck oh, okay i gotta work on that and then and then i can go do the internal work but i'm I, that's not stimulated unless i'm you know um saying things that i think are helpful that are actually reinforcing uh privileged systems right so so um i think the the biggest advice is or advice i don't know i don't have advice but um, yeah the message you know all you can do is all you can do and and the more present with ourselves that we are the more we are aware of what's actually happening in which case we are aware of what is available for us to do i love it and that's all we can do all we can do is all we can do. I love that. And at the end of the day, it has to start with self. That's what you're saying. It has to start with self. It's the only way we can truly show up, truly show up as our best selves for the, everyone else. Take ourselves on. Yeah. Um, thank and you. It, it has to start there, but it cannot end there. That's, that's Amen. The, that's like Amen. a new age trope, right? It's like, oh, just work on yourself. It'll be fine. Like that's a like, that that doesn't work it has to start there but it has to, it has, then has to move, move thank you thank yeah. you essential thank you so much for listening to this episode of the one world your story podcast if you enjoyed hearing this story and you wish to hear more make sure you subscribe to us on itunes and youtube and of course follow us on instagram at one world your story from all of us here at the One World Your Story podcast, we are sending you so much joy and love. Have a wonderful rest of your day.